and nothing to do with the Barack Obama case um, in, in terms of not misleading. Trivial thing to do. 
He has been unable to convince anybody within the scientific culture that that is an interesting thing to do. It's you know that intentional sculptural act which he does, and then they give Desmond all the time, and then it's built into a whole set of things. And it's different, you know. It's the Ockham way and the Stein way. I guess that's true. Can I ask you a question about the spin-off of the work that your group does? Do you expect that the technologies or tools that you develop could change our notion of touch on Earth? Is any of that technology, you know, you expect that can be applied here on Earth? I mean, the Revised Community is integrated together. So, I mean... Are you, for instance, working with, like, really remote touch, like, you know, the remote controllers where you have sort of feedback, force feedback? No, and in fact, you know, the fact of distance means that you need control systems which have very long delay times. And so you get into sort of a problem regime which is... Is that stopped? The autonomy remote control equation is very different than on a robot here. So is any work being done, even though the time delay is in Fahrenheit? Why would the time delay always be in Fahrenheit? It's only for sequence. Because it's delayed. It's like the Internet, you mean. No, but it just puts a huge premium on local autonomy for most decisions. Well, just think of a simple case where you're manipulating a rock to put it on top of another rock. Suppose you have a 10-minute delay. Why is that a problem? This rock is not going to move by itself. It might take you 30,000 tries to get it to stay there. The advantage of the artist in the desert, right, is... The desert and offset. Is you have that very short control proof to get it to balance. I realize that. But isn't all you have an offset in time? Well, you have an offset. But, I mean, if you're in control theory, that then changes the nature of the control loops that you can exercise. So, in fact, you end up with much more distributed systems than you would with short control loops. So, if you've got a robot inside of the nuclear power plant that's going in there to try and turn the tap off or whatever they do, there you can have feedback systems and so on that basically give you remote manipulation. But that makes very little sense if you're manipulating on the surface of Mars. I don't believe in that. But what you're saying here, in my mind, I think I get it. So, just that there's... The robot has to be able to do certain things by itself. Right. But, I mean, I might be... This might be... I might be not understanding what you're saying. No, no, maybe... Maybe what I'm saying... I mean, it's a thing that there seems to be a joint process here. The robot can do certain things itself, and then you're sort of doing something. I see it as if you're trying to improvise a duet with someone, and you've got this delay loop between you and this other person. But there is no delay. It's an offset. I mean, it's a... Your actions are also delayed, so... So, you pick up the rock, and it'll take 20 minutes to figure out how heavy the rock is. Yeah, once... Okay, but after you've done these 20 minutes, aren't you then synchronous? Because no things have happened in between. Especially the case... No things have happened in between, so from that moment on, aren't you then in touch? You're talking about every... Maybe I'm completely... You can do the improvisation if everybody just slows down. If everybody slows down, it only does one thing every eight minutes. No, no, no. No, but I can get to stop it. Yeah. But the supervisor better have enough score so that when you're in contact again, you're still... Still... Maybe aligned. Yeah. Or maybe not, I guess. Well, yeah, that is an interesting issue, isn't it? Yeah. Are these robots improvisers, first of all? How much of a score do they need? And is that score... Is the notion of needing a score, which is something that a lot of people, at least in these times, don't think they really need anymore, is that something that the scientific robotic community feels it needs? And is that related to the way they think about other kinds of activities, like the need for scores in music, or the need for other kinds of fuzzy, more determined plans? I mean, what... That is... That's what I'm sure asking. Is there a relationship? So, in fact, yes, there are robots that improvise. I mean, so that you can software the system so that they go around. Go here, go to that mountain. And then the robot will pick its own route among a field of hazardous things and get to the mountain. 
and it's able to decide you know, uh, from its vision and its, uh, what happened when it took steps uh, what to do next. And that, that's an improvisation based upon certain kinds of rules that it has coded um, where you know, big dark things are more likely to be holes and bumps and, and those kind of things. So yes, these robots will improvise um, strategies versus to, to achieve certain goals. You don't have a problem with that, right? <coughs> I mean, that's amazing, because no, I, and, and I, I, I mean, mean, expose the realm of art, people have a lot of problems. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And I'm wondering why. <laughs> and that's a problem in art more than in science, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very good at yeah. Improvisation variation. The robot can choose between various paths to go to random. And improvisation seems to acknowledge different kind of things, like intention to play around. And I don't think the robot has any kind of intention, like, oh, yeah, you know, like, how can I jump to, or how can I do it on one, one leg, or anything like that? There's this kind of intentionality. He's getting from A to B. And you can do that in various ways. It's like jump on his hand. Improvisation isn't only turning it upside down and creating something outrageous. It's also. But it's only that. 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 I don't see any problem with robotic intentionality. And I don't see this big distinction. I mean, I'm trying to figure out what level is that on. I mean, how many variations do you need? Like 20 million? And you're saying, well, maybe we don't know anymore whether it's, you know, intentionality or just choosing having an awful lot of choices. You know, I mean, it's kind of hard to know that. Well, we had a, a, a piece made in the 80s Longwood, which was performed by robots, and most of the time they were uh, having no problems with their navigation system and created these incredible dances that uh, actors, the live actors, were improvising with. And you know they were all very conscious about the performance, the performance they were making. And it was all deterioration in such a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. And and they were communicating all the time. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you whether the science First, that there's a common mind model because uh, they said that you need experience to learn. But I think trying to reinforce it to learn faster. Well, but but when you look at how our notion of And what we accept as reality has also uh, changed greatly. And then, like us as models, um, I know it's very hard to break away from maybe the basic perceptive uh, functioning of, of the human being, but at the same time, if you look at, for instance, people who are um, um, very heavily involved in meditations, that's one of their attempts to really break away from the certain models and uh, so that we can actually some kind of bypass. Uh, basic uh, maybe uh, human functioning and access different uh, perceptive modes and um, and it seems to be possible. So now thinking of the machines, it, the way you describe the machines to me still seems to be very um, you know machines have to agree and then we have to agree with the machine and then you know we do know something. But I'm really wondering whether for people for us who use Technology. I mean, even though a lot of the technology we develop is the extension of our own minds, it's true. You know, we write the software and we use this cool machine. But we actually get trained by the machine a lot. And I know that the way I perceive is very differently. And, and there has been a very important feedback that the machine taught me, you know, something. And I'm just curious whether, uh, <coughs> instead of thinking of that way, could you actually, could we get trained? Because a lot of things that those robots have robots and proceed that we can. But we kind of think of a hybrid system where eventually we get trained by the robots to proceed differently. And then to actually eventually do more of a collaboration with the robots so that it's a true hybrid system. It's not just a uni patch that says, oh, we have an umbrella today. But more like really extensions of a different being that can be a hybrid system. Well, let me react in two ways. And I think um, that David talked about two different kinds of examples. And they got two kittens. Now, that, that learning process one was, in fact, one where the, the, the neural system had not yet stabilized. Right? And so in that case, uh, in fact, the nature of that experience actually changed the, the wiring, if you like. Um, and the, the second kind that you're naming is almost more like a cultural or social process, right? where indeed the technology changes uh, your changes you. 
Um, Ian Hacking has a book out called Rewriting the Soul at the moment, which basically is, is, a, is a long discussion about the nature of memory, as memory not being a fixed human capability, one, but one is that is very co closely coupled to a social context and to a technological context. And indeed, you know, why remember all those phone numbers when your computer can now store them, right? And so the kinds of things that, that your attention will go to will depend upon what the machines can do. And that is sort of a social cultural uh, process different from the two kittens. Um, and so there, there are two different kinds of, of situations, both of which come into play. Um, and there's no doubt um, that this is some of the problems of, of, of the technology. The technology comes with it certain kinds of things that it does easily and certain kinds of things that it doesn't. And so that biases. Yeah, I understand that. But, um, I mean, those two sets of instances, I understand the difference, but. Uh, you know, children uh, have a lot of malleability uh, in the way they experience it that we're not able to explain. So you could imagine that it could be trying differently uh, somehow uh, by uh, having uh, the use of different technology that we do. But one of the questions I had was about this possibility. Do you envision a hybrid system where it's not just us sending robots or, or us trying to understand what robots do, but where really it's more of a and, and this is where this piece does make a difference, right? I mean, it's a different collaboration when you and I can interact sufficiently quickly, in fact, that we can modify our joint behavior intelligently. But when the interaction is something that is you know, five light hours away, you know, to do certain kind of things jointly will be very, very difficult. Oh, okay, so not so much of doing jointly, but learning to perceive differently. You know, like you, you learn from
you famous then? Um, not my work. I mean, no. No? Your sunglasses. Sh- yes, my glasses. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go eat something. Okay. I'll see okay, you later. Bye. You're part of bye the... Bye. You have a... I don't have anything yet because uh, they built something but it was totally wrong. Yes. Wow. So, uh, that started this morning. How yeah. can... Could they um, give any names? No, no, no not who, but why could this happen? <laughs> no, I think the guy did it listen uh, with And now the names. Seriously. <laughs> with the recommendations, you know. Mm. So I just can't use what he said. What but where, 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 where will it be uh, built? It will be in that building. Alright. It's next to mine. Oh, next oh, to okay. the room next to mine. Not as impressive as he is, of course. <laughs> but has that built yet. yet. It isn't built yet, so it's good I to have be two boxes out of 30. Oh, okay. Mm. So we'll search for you then. Yes, I'm sure you will notice me. If they are ready. Okay. Okay. See you. You are sure? Yes, only one of his kind.
Sponsored by the French Embassy in Haiti, oh. and uh, it's very expensive to participate in these events, yes. especially when you don't present uh, conventional works that can be rolled, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, some artists, from what I understood, have been founded through the BNR organization, but uh, it's, it is mostly for the prestige it gives to your. To your so you make work. no money out yeah. of this? No, no, no. No. It may bring to something. It may take to something. All right. So where make? Where do you make money out of? I mean, That's from, an art. from dealing works of art that are not the one I present in that Vienna. This has a more an experimental also orientation. Mm -hmm. I paint also. What I present in that Biennale is a light project. I play with shadows, but I paint also. 
I'm a conventional oil paint oh, yeah? artist. Yes. But, and I say conventional, not what in what I'm doing, but uh, in the support. And how does it work then when you want to become an artist, which is aware of the fact that it's all based on social things and that? Because it's, it's quite a solitary. I uh, think it's, you have to find the way to keep the sincerity of your work mm -hmm. in, the, in the same time be uh, aware, to say that, mm -hmm. of the realities of the market. So does that mean that you're commercial? That will not maybe take you to fortune, but uh, there is, uh, there are always unfortunately a lot of fa fashion, new orientations mm -hmm. in art, you know, and sometimes you have to, to if you can fit in one of these orientations, like there is a big uh, fashion, quote unquote, on installation. You step in it. No, I, I cannot say I step in it. Because what I do or what I present here is in harmony with what I have been doing. Understand? Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that people judge that it is a reflection of my time. Oh yeah, okay. But how but do I, you deal with the rules of the market? Those rules are very subtle rules because the more you are out of the rules in art, the better you are. The more provocative, the better. Uh -huh. But in the same time, uh, I think you should, if you can be provocative and good, I mean, that there is just, just not the provocative aspect and some spiritual quality in what you're doing. That's what you're trying, you have to try to maintain. Or to Can you define your personal uh, uh, spiritual quality then? No. There is what you do that comes out of you and there is what you start doing because of the market. And uh, unfortunately things. when what you did spontaneously becomes a product that can be sold for let's say for one hundred thousand dollars it is hard to keep the spontaneity because whatever change you make is a risk yeah what you did first works you got to be where it doesn't become a trick or something that's right and I, I'm not so sure that's right. I'm not so sure that many artists could stay away from that mm. and the very famous one for example, if you see what Jackson Pollock has been doing, mm -hmm. if you see his first work and what he has done when he became famous, most of them look alike. Yeah. So then and it's just the case for many artists the I know. Yes, it's because it's it's a product. Then it's not a personal relationship you have with your thing. It's mm -hmm. something many people are waiting for. And uh, people do not go as fast as an artist. I mean, when you get tired of what you're doing, that doesn't mean people get tired of it. Why did they ask you for this uh, exhibition? No, they didn't ask me. Anything. No? Uh, I met the curator of the exhibit in Cuba, in yes. the Biennale of, of uh, Habana. Yeah. And he liked my work, so uh, he asked me if I could present a project. I didn't have any specific uh, orientation. And you're doing a project over here. A project? Yeah. <laughs> I'm presenting something. I don't know if it is a project. But uh, I developed, if you prefer, I developed an idea. Mm. So it's uh, not the only thing I'm doing. I, I let's say I would someone would get crazy about what I present and it becomes becomes so famous then I'm stopped. It would be a big fight. Will I take the risk to break with that thing that brought me to celeb celebrity, you understand? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And go to something else. Yeah. Like I'm work, working with light, I may decide that I'm sick of working with light and I want to paint. But maybe what they want is that light. But you will change then. then. I don't know, I wish I could have the strength. I, I, I'm not pure as you are, you know. No. I mean, it depends on, on what the challenge is. Mm. Because 
your you are not only your work of art, your paintings or whatever, you have a lot of other desires. And if one side of yourself can take you to them, you must be very strong to be able to resist. Mm -hmm. Not be the toy in the sense of uh, that yeah. it meant. Like that fashionable thing or something. When I said fashion, I don't mean it's a negative thing. But no, like always, it's uh, like always it's like going on. Like in the on. 50s, any figurative work would not interest yeah. any critique. Which I think is very stupid because you may have someone in a figurative at the time of a lot of abstract movement and that person is good. Being good is not bad. Uh, obviously being part of the movement. Mm -hmm. But it's only for the great that you uh, recognize those people. Or